Greetings to all of humanity's really a joy. It's my pleasure, it's my honor to always be out here as usual, well connected with nature and bringing to you this message of emancipation whereby I'm pointing you to look inwardly to discover that your real identity is your divinity. And that is why I want to speak to you today concerning how we are all self-made. And it's really a joy to discover that we are all self-made and that we are the ones who are actually creating our world. For one of the best things that would have ever happened to me is to come to understand that I am the one who is creating my reality and creating my personality by my thought forms. Therefore, my brother and my sisters, everything goes back to your mentality. So when I say that we are all self-made, I've heard many others use this same terminology and they do that to point to us that we are here to learn how to create and to become whatever we want to be by understanding how the mind works and working with the laws that governs humanity and the laws that governs the universe so we realize that there's actually no one to change but ourselves because we are all self-made. Everything that is happening in our life is based on our thinking because every action is the expression of a thought. And you cannot check the laws that governs nature. Like for example, the divine law of reproduction is that every seed and every species must reproduce after its own kind. And no one can change that. And that is why we are all self-made. Because whatever thoughts you impress upon your subconscious mind and your subconscious mind receive that thought with feeling, it's going to give you back that which you would have sown. So it is seed time and harvest time. Once you understand that there's a seed time and a harvest time, then you would know that you are responsible for your thoughts and you're responsible for your actions. So if you are facing lack in your life, doubt, fear, emptiness, if you're experiencing these things in your life, it is telling you something about your mind. It is telling you that you need to fix your mind. It is telling you that you need to put everything in perspective. Because you are not the creature of circumstances. Circumstances are the creatures of man. Man create them. We are creating everything that is happening around us. So everything that we see is happening is actually the fulfillment of a prophecy. Because it is a thought that has been manifested. So my brother and my sisters, you can rearrange your mind and have the life that you so desire to live. So what I'm doing, I'm actually giving you the key to joy and happiness. And that key is pointing you to look right within yourself. To hold yourself responsible for everything in your life. And work towards making your life a better life. Whereby you feel pleased. Whereby you feel more accomplished whereby you feel that you have achieved more things in your life because you find that which you love and you're willing to do what that which you love and it's helping you to build yourself into the kind of person you actually always want to be. So my brother and my sisters, you see people being successful. It didn't just happen by coincidence. There's no coincidence. There is actually a real science. To get rich. There's actually a real science. To attract abundance in your life. There's actually a real science. To change. Our life. But we have to be patient. That we have to understand. The principle of the mustard seed. That if you would have faith as a mustard seed. That there would always be expansion. You have to understand the law of expansion. Or the law of expanding. Your, your eyes must be open that you can see something that is so small yet you can see it being so large because you have a larger vision because you see the big picture 
You see, many people are hindering themselves because they're not seeing the big picture. You ought to see the big picture. That's why you're supposed to live in the end. See yourself exactly how you would like yourself to be. See yourself owning that which you would like to own. We are here in this world to realize that this world is a world of abundance and that we are abundant people. And it is our right to live in abundance. But we have to know that it doesn't just happen like that. That we are actually self-made. So there are things that we would have to do in our life to shape our life to come into that place of alignment so that we can receive what is ours. You must understand the power of oneness. You must understand that everything is connected. And it is what you sow you would reap. So my brother and my sisters, in essence, okay, what I'm doing, I'm actually encouraging you to believe in yourself. I'm actually encourage you, encouraging you to trust your heart. To follow your God feeling towards walking that which you desire to make your life better in whatever way you want it to be better. No, it's all about you. That is why it's very important for you to know how you're going to bed. What kind of thoughts are you going to bed with in your mind? Are you going to bed feeling motivated and feeling successful? Going to bed every night feeling that you are a successful and accomplished person. See yourself being and doing that which you so desire. See, seeing yourself making the impact that you want to make upon others' life in this world, in whatever way it is. We are here to grow and expand. So my brother and my sisters, as I would have said before, we are all self-made. So if you change your mind, you change your life. A change of mind is a change of destiny. The way how you can transform your life is by the renewing of your mind. And you must always remember that whatsoever things that are good, whatsoever things that are lovely, whatsoever things that are pure, if there be any virtue in these things, that you must think on these things. You must be the Lord and Master of your destiny by being the Lord of your mind. You must be in total control of your mind. Because you understand how thoughts work. You understand how the brain works. You realize that the brain is a transmitter and a receiver of energy, vibration, frequency. And everything is going out into the ether. Everything is going out into the universe. And whatever goes out into the universe must come back to you. So we are all self-made. So there is no one to blame. So my brother and my sisters, do not blame your church members. Do not blame politicians. Do not blame your upbringing. Yes, we know all of these things were influenced in our life, but now we come to understand that we can change all of that because we are of the age and the stage that we can actually think for ourselves and realize everything is based on a decision. So yes, be responsible. Accept the fact that we are all self-made. And what, which, whichever way you find yourself or in what status you see yourself, it all have to do with your mind. It all have to do with your thinking. And it can be easily changed. So, my brother and my sister, I want to thank you very much for listening to me. And I want to say, if what I'm saying is really helpful to you, is helping you in any way, and you haven't subscribed already, I'm encouraging you to subscribe, to like, to comment, uh, to share this video. But, you know, just before I leave, I just want to remind you, as usual, that this message I always bring to you, it is the single eye. Yes. It is the single eye message of self-realization of which Matthew 6.22 says that if your eye be single, your whole body will be full of light. And my brother and my sisters had not been that my whole body was filled with light. When the single eye awakes within me, I wouldn't have been here bringing this message to you. Saying to you that when the single eye awakes within you, then you will understand why the Bible says that you shall change from mortal to immortality in a twinkling of an eye. For that twinkling of an eye is an opening of an eye where you will awake from the dream of life. And truly, you will experience that great and mighty shaking and you will hear that unearthly wind, that great and mighty rushing wind. And you will ascend like a fiery wind and you will exit your skull. Yes, you become invisible, you become one with the wind. And you will come to realize that God 
is in flesh and our body is the tomb in which God is buried and God is our imagination and we would experience the awakening of our imagination and we would realize that it is the rising of the S-U-N in a S-O-N and that it is actually the dawning of a new day in your life then you will really understand that truly the sun parallels the human imagination and the human imagination parallels the sun for without the sun there is no life and there is no light and without the human imagination there isn't anything made that was made and you are told in the sun book which is the bible okay in psalms 84 11 that the lord thy god is a sun a s-u-n and a shield and no good thing will he withhold from you then common sense will teach you that the sun has never withhold any good thing from humanity for the sun is what powers all of humanity and give all of humanity its energy. Then in Malachi chapter 4 and verses 2, you are told also that the sun of righteousness shall arise in you with healing in his wings. Showing you that it is only when the sun has risen in you, which is that light in you, and you discover that light, that you will discover true righteousness and it will bring healing to you and everyone all around you. That is why my encouragement always to you is to use your mind power, which is your solar power your sun power your god power your creative power which is actually the sexual power use that power to achieve your every desire and prove for yourself that we are all self-made so with that being said i want to say peace love you all i'm out